for preparing this reception. They have been planning for a couple months now, under Monsignor Gears, or behind his back rather, they've set out um, all of the decorations that we have, they've ordered all the food, they cooked it themselves, they were here early this morning to make this happen. And like Monsignor Gears says, nobody does a reception like Holy Family Cathedral Women's Club. We are going to move hierarchically in the church. Bishop Slattery gets to go first, <laughs> and we'll turn it over to him. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, this is a, a very wonderful crowd of people, and uh, you're all the friends of, of Monsignor Gear, and I can tell and feel the warmth in this room. Uh, oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> See, sometimes I just fall right into it. It would have come off a little better if this was winter time. But anyway, I want to publicly thank Monsignor Gear for serving as a priest for so many years, since 1967. Is that right? Yeah. He was, uh, he, he is and will always be uh, one year younger than I am. <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll be 75 next August, a year from now, so. Uh, and then I have to write a letter to the Holy Father and tell him that I'm 75 and I'll do whatever he tells me. <laughs> so I hope I stay. By the way, Monsignor is not really leaving. He's staying here, not in this building, but he's gonna be, you're gonna see him. He's not gonna disappear, I hope. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna be staying here, and uh, and I'm grateful to him because I asked him to postpone his uh, departure from the from the cathedral for his retirement for a few more months uh, until the, the rector, the new rector, will be able to come here at the beginning of uh, the first Sunday of uh, of Advent. And uh, I'm very grateful to Father Jovita too. You get to love him and to know. I think a lot of you know him already because he spent some time here uh, when he first came from Africa. Well, anyway, could I now say a few nice things about Monsignor? <laughs> You are very wise to sit. <laughs> uh, now to be serious for just a moment. Uh, Monsignor and I have worked together now since I came here 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, and we've worked together closely. And uh, I really uh, feel that I have not uh, given him enough verbal support for the many wonderful things he's done since he has worked with me as his bishop. Uh, but I want him to know, and I want you to know, that I am very grateful for all that he has done. To sum it up, I would have to say that um, Monsignor Gear has the mind of an administrator. He is able to run things, and he runs them very, very well from raising money, to spending the money, and making things happen. <laughs> He's very good at spending. Uh, he's also very good at delegating, which is a, a wonderful instinct to pick the right person for the right job. And that's why the cathedral has been run so well. But more important than his mind as an administrator, he has the heart of a priest because his real joy is in administering the sacraments and preaching. That's why he preaches so well and why he's such a happy person. Because he, not because he has the mind of an administrator, but because the, he has the heart of a priest. He hears confessions and he goes away as every priest does after hearing confessions, knowing that he has done an enormous amount of good that he'll never be able to see in the life of the person whose sins have been forgiven. 
Priests do this every day. They hear confessions. People's sins are forgiven, and they walk away. And, and thank God for um, Monsignor Helpine for starting that very strong tradition of having confessions here at the cathedral, the mother church of the diocese. So I'm grateful to Monsignor Helpine too. And then Monsignor Gear just picked that up and ran with it. And so we still, people come from all over to go to confession here at the cathedral. He celebrates mass, visits the sick, buries the dead, administers the sacrament of, or other witnesses officially for the church, the marriages of many, many people here at the cathedral. So Monsignor is a happy person because he is a priest. It's because he is the heart of a priest, the eternal priest, Jesus Christ. I think that uh, many, many of us, all of us, inherit from our childhood many things that we got from our parents, some of our likes and dislikes. So Monsignor must have had, I've never met them, he must have had two wonderful parents. I don't know where else he would have gotten so many of the gifts that he has except through them and from them. So on this special occasion, we should say a prayer of gratitude to Almighty God for giving him such good parents. So Monsignor, I don't know what else to say except thank you, and I want you to know that I truly do appreciate all that you've done for this diocese and especially for the cathedral. since this has all been done behind my back. Do I have permission to open this? Yes. <laughs> Did you want me to open this? Sure. I, I, I'm only, I have to ask. Because the Bible. <laughs> the Bible? <laughs> Probably the King James Version. <laughs> something in here. Monsignor a chance to speak in a little while. I know that's painful for you. But next up, we have a presentation from some of the students from Holy Family Cathedral School.
thank you, Holy Family Cathedral School Choir. Next up, we have a familiar face and a blast from the past in two principals, Leslie and Jay. They, they're skipping school. Oh, here we go. Here's Jay. Here's Leslie. I didn't want to have to call the principal, but let's just call me. We are actually here on behalf of not just ourselves, but Maureen Clemens and Anna Francois as well, all of whom um, have received incredible encouragement and support through the years from Monsignor Gear. And Maureen Clemens asked that we read this to her friend, Monsignor Gear. I am sorry I could not be there to celebrate with you. 32 years you and dear Mary Louise O'Connor guided me through RCIA to find my place of faith in the Catholic Church. You continued to be a source of wisdom, strength, patience, and friendship as I continued my mission working in the Catholic schools. I offer to you my heartfelt gratitude and thanks, not just for how you have supported me, but for your dedication to keeping Holy Family Cathedral School a viable source for Catholic education. My prayers are with you for good health and peace as you ease into retirement. <laughs> with love, Maureen Clements. My story is very similar to Maureen's. Um, 25 or 30 years ago, Monsignor brought me into the church. Since that time, he has uh, been there to bring my children uh, into communion with the church. He married my daughter, uh, made me the principal of his school. I've also been there in service to him from Christ the King days when I put on an apron and a, <laughs> and a picked up a serving tray. And I've been at many, many parties, but uh, he has been a constant source of support and encouragement for me, and he has allowed me to fulfill um, my desire and my need to serve the church, and he has been both a, a friend and a spiritual guide, and for that I thank him very, very much. You look nervous, Monsignor. <laughs> uh, seven years ago, I came and sat down with you and Todd Goldsmith at the time and interviewed for this position as principal at Holy Family Cathedral School. And I remember walking out thinking, I have not met a priest like Monsignor, and I think it's going to be a very interesting time to work for him. <laughs> and it was, and it was an amazing and fulfilling opportunity to work, not just for you, my senior, but, but for Holy Family Cathedral School. And I remember at one point in time as a new principal, I, there was some concern or the other, and I thought I had a pretty good handle on it. And I went to Monsignor and I said, we have this problem, I, I just want to let you know so you're not worried about it. And he said, oh, Jay, I pay you to worry about these things. <laughs> And, and that struck me a bit, and as I thought about it more, and as I, we went through uh, many ups and downs as any school will have, it, it always struck me that though I don't believe he did not worry, I, I was always struck with how confident he was and how sure he was in his faith that things at Holy Family and our personal lives, whatever it may be, would always work out just if we put our trust in God. And I think that was such an important thing that he did for me, for the school, and for anyone that came in contact with him. That faith and that confidence that the Lord will provide was always there. And I just, it, it always struck me and always made uh, such an impact on me. And I just was so thankful and appreciative of the opportunity to work with you and to still be able to call you my friend today. So. Thank you, Monsignor, for everything you have done for all of us here. We actually did come here empty-handed. Somewhere, Meg Grove has a, a, gift, a gift for you from us. So it's for your Where is it? It's for your travels. I think she may have had to take Mark home, but Mrs. Burrell said she had it. And, oh, she's in the kitchen? Uh, well, I will go find her, and we'll make sure that you get your gift on her. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm all for giving me a gift. <laughs>
And since we just had our principals go, one of the things that is taught in our school very well is mathematics. If you do a little bit of math, and I don't know if you've considered this yet, you have been at Holy Family for 17 years. You have been a priest for 47 years. If you simplify your fractions and estimate a little bit, that is one third of your priestly life you have spent here at Holy Family. So thank you for that gift. And to behold, a little bit of fractions has made some time to produce another present. more so than we have been able to share with you. Uh, but there was one thing that you really have to know. There were two opposites who attracted me. One who was, had his jammies calling him all the time, and this one was packing up going to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing that you need to know about Monsignor, he's the only one that I've ever met that paints in wingtip shoes, black wingtip shoes. <laughs> And he has black pants on, and he's painting, and he's doing this rolling, rolling it on the wall. And I go into the other room, and all of a sudden I hear, oh, darn! But he's the only one who can step back, look at his work, and step in the pan. <laughs> Eating, cleaning up after he's standing there with his feet in the face. I, I never laughed so hard. <laughs> Don't invite him to paint. What you <laughs> uh, it has been a pleasure to, to serve with you and to just 
Like right. Jerry said, you are probably one of the finest homilists that I have ever heard in this diocese, with the exception. <laughs> And um, it looked as though these two ships might collide when it came to the fundraising. And I thought, oh boy, you know, the cathedral is going up at the same time as Catholic Charities. Well, lo and behold, Monsignor came and said, the cathedral will put the poor first. And so he backed back and stopped for two years or something like that so that Catholic Charities could build our new campus. And it just, it just brought me to tears uh, to see this man put everything on hold uh, in their process uh, so that uh, the poor could be served. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and then, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, we spent a couple of hours on the phone together. Uh, a, a, a lady had shown up at the rectory, uh, homeless and in need of <laughs> some support, uh, a place to stay. And I said, oh, you know, we'll take care of it together. And so then I paraded him around town for like two and a half hours trying to find the right place for this lady to be. And uh, Monsignor took her everywhere and told her jokes on the phone. You know, was, I've been hearing all of this secondhand. <laughs> well, she ended up at St. Elizabeth's Lodge uh, and Monsignor had spent uh, a, a very nice evening with this lady. So I see it in big ways that he serves the poor. And I see it in very small personal ways that he really reaches out and cares for other people. And so uh, we have a wonderful example in our rector of that. And because of that, I'm going to give him a volunteer application. Uh, <laughs> now he has lots of free time. <laughs> thing I'll say, and that is that, uh, that any um, newly ordained first assignment does a lot to cement who they're going to be in their ministry, because they see the person uh, who is the pastor, his liturgical style, uh, his way of uh, communicating with people, his uh, homilist, homilistic style, all these different things, and uh, they become a part of who you are, their good habits or bad habits, uh, as it were. I have been very blessed to have Monsignor Gear as, as my first uh, pastor uh, at, in my ordination. Thank you so much, Monsignor. As the fear of God comes into the when I step on the stage. And to continue on with what Kevin is, it's, it's a great blessing that when I found that I was going to be assigned here, it's my first assignment. It was, it, it was a great joy to have knowing that I would be learning from the best. And, and that was through Monsignor, of his experience, his pastoral, and his, his love for everyone. And one of the great things that if you don't realize, if you ever see the deacons standing on the altar and all of a sudden we just get this big smile on our face, <laughs> and sometimes we're biting our lips. <laughs> a lot of times when we go up to Monsignor, for the blessing at the gospel, and we say, Monsignor, we, we, we receive your blessing. And he looks and says, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're trying to say, oh, no, we're and he's like, hey, we're trying to <laughs> You start laughing out loud. <laughs> and then you're the sign of peace. It's always, it's a great honor to be uh, referred to uh, Monsignor as one of his little dickens. <laughs> And, and that is a great honor to know that. And we, we, we welcome and love you on all that you've taught us and showing us how to be a, a graceful a servant of Christ. And we will always see you in the future. The littlest of the Dickens, I guess. 
I too have only, you know, have had the honor and blessing of, of being under Monsignor my entire diaconate, which is over <laughs> three months now. <laughs> but, but it really is an honor and a, and a blessing to be here. I remember about four years, it was a little over four years ago, my family actually emigrated from Missouri to move to Tulsa. Um, we, we kind of established uh, Holy Family as our, as our parish. And Monsignor very quickly recognized us there. It probably ha helped that I had so many blonde little girls with us, but uh, <laughs> he really welcomed us. Uh, and we really felt part of this community. And it really is a gift, and I thank you for that. It is wonderful to, to celebrate the Eucharist with you on the altar. Um, and there are many other things that uh, Monsignor here will say you also have to bite your tongue with it. I won't repeat right now. Right? But anyway, I'll, I'll leave it short and say thank you. And, and I look forward to, to assisting the master group, hopefully indefinitely. So. Thank you all. Next up is our associate pastor, Father Louie. <laughs> Before Father Louie really starts, you need to know that he was the chairman of a secret committee. So the source of all of this skullduggery was right in your house, my senior. We had a series of meetings to try to plan these things, and we want to thank everybody who was on the secret committee. And we'll, we'll my name in a little bit later. But uh, first, let's listen to Father Louie. I have only been here. 11 months and two weeks. <laughs> and for me to say something about my signal gear, I have a lot to say. <laughs> when I came here, after seeing the bishop, he gave me a letter to come and see Monsignor Gear. I saw Monsignor, he smiled. <laughs> so when he asked me, I told him that I'm from Nigeria. He said, wow. <laughs> it has been a great moment of joy and happiness. You may not understand this coming from a culture different from yours. On my arrival here, Monsignor Gear helped me through the process of integration. He integrated me properly into the American culture, and I am still in the process <laughs> of being an okay. <laughs> but within this period of months, I have stayed with him. I have come to learn a lot. What? It is not the office you hold that endears you to the people but the service you render. The signal is really a priest, a man of God, an administrator, a seasoned counselor. And above all, in his humor, it is just like a bar, it heals. I remember the first time he took me out for a dinner, we went there, he asked me what I will eat. I looked at the menu, I could not pick anything. <laughs> he suggested one, I managed to swallow. <laughs> I managed to eat. But after that encounter, I think whatever is being presented, as the Bible says, it what is said before you. <laughs> and also, he told me a story of an African centenarian who came here, who was finding it so difficult to eat. 
he cooked something. But since then, I have learned how to eat the food presented. Monsignor, thank you very much. I want to let you know, as the associate pastor, we love you. We appreciate your work. We thank you. And we pray that God we continue to strengthen you. But one prayer I have always prayed is this. Let me reach up to 47 years in the priesthood as Musin has reached. Let me reach 74, 73, so that I will retire also like him. <laughs> and I pray that God will grant me this prayer. So, Musino, in appreciation for all you have done for us, we thank you today with this small gift. Do not look at the size of the gift, but at the heart in which it is given. Many fine gifts in sacks a lot like this. <laughs> it is a symbol. Oh my goodness. Of a computer. <laughs> Monsignor has been waiting for the time when he gets the microphone all to himself. <laughs> you know, this has been kind of fun. It's kind of nice to hear people say nothing but nice things about you. <laughs> Especially when I know page two. <laughs> but we're not going to do page two. We'll just do this one. Well, thank you very much. This is, as um, Michael has indicated, most of this is a surprise. I had said something about wanting to celebrate our 17 years together, have an anniversary for that occasion, and then we would celebrate all this. And then after that was accomplished, we'll move on to whatever the, uh, the new rector has. And I really expected a very nice reception and some marvelous food from the women's group and a little party and off we would go. So this is uh, really uh, quite unexpected and I appreciate it very, very much. Bishop, I appreciate uh, your being here and coming to be with us. That's a very important part of it. Also, as I said today in the... I should be very careful how I say this with you in the room. <laughs> as I said in my almost homily this morning, uh, I so appreciate the trust you've given me. I made it in church without any conversation. Uh, as I said to the people on, on this, this today on at Mass, that to entrust your cathedral to someone I know is a very serious thing in your life. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the trust. all the moments of terror I've been able to give you. <laughs> and throughout the restoration, the bishop would come and one day we had red pillars. Next day we had a blue wall. Next day we had a purple wall. The next day we had something else. And he would just calmly look about and he would say, it seems to be coming together. <laughs> And a few months later, 
it seems to be coming together. <laughs> and then one day, he stood in the back of the church before we went down the aisle, and he says, it has all come together quite beautifully. <laughs> I have shared with other uh, rector friends that have had jobs something like mine, and I honestly do not know another rector who has had any greater freedom to renew the cathedral as you gave to me, and I appreciate that, and I think we had a good time doing it, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. As the bishop entrusted me with uh, something very precious to him and to the, uh, to the diocese and the mother church of the diocese, you have entrusted me with flowers, and uh, I appreciate that. You have entrusted me with many, many things, and I think one of the joys of the Holy Family that is very different than a lot of parishes, and it is the wonderful heritage of Monsignor Alpine, and that is the joy of celebrating the sacrament, not only of the Eucharist, not only of baptism, not only of marriage, but how this parish so joyfully and wholeheartedly celebrates the sacrament of reconciliation. And that's a wonderful gift for a priest. And as someone who does have a confessor, and who does confess his sins, I know the level of trust that you have to put in the person to whom you confess. And I'm sure Father Lewis and uh, myself and all of the priests that have ever been the confessors here in this church appreciate profoundly your trust that you place in us at that very, very crucial moment. So I thank you for that, for these 17 years. And I hope as Monsignor Alpine kept doing that for 13, I'm going to beat him and make it 15. <laughs> As I said this morning, it's, it's been great to be a uh, part of this life in this parish for uh, 17 years. Actually, your, your percentages, Michael, where did Michael go with his numbers? Uh, your percentages are even safer because I spent a year as an associate pastor here in 1971. So it's really 18 years that I've actually been here at Holy Family in one way or another. Now, I know none of you remember I was here in 1971, but... Uh, some of you ought to. <laughs> Actually, those were very interesting years. Father Paul Gonman was the rector, and Father James White and I were here together. And I can remember one person said to me once, I'm never sure whether it's you or White until you open your mouth. Because <laughs> from a distance you look the same, but once you open your mouth, you know you're not the one from Chicago. <laughs> Also, I simply have to also say, as I uh, said earlier today, these 17 years have been a tremendous challenge and joy in celebrating the life of Holy Family Cathedral School. And the tremendous help that the parish, and my goodness, the cooperation and the, the dedication, and especially our women's club and reference to the school, and the support that you have constantly given to, to me and to this whole reality of Holy Family Cathedral School has been wonderful. And I see that we are surrounded here this afternoon with lots of our students and our graduates and the families that are involved there. And so thank you for that time that we have and for the joy that we're able to celebrate as that particular educational institution. I'm not sure, Bishop, I said today that if there is a star and a great victory symbol in the Diocese of Tulsa of excellence through very difficult times, it is your cathedral school. I think you have done a wonderful job. Congratulations. For those of you who have been around a while, you know we've been kind of placid, then we've been kind of down, and we've been kind of placid, and we've been way up. So we've had it all. We've done it all as a cathedral school, and it's been a great time. So thank you. <laughs> Do I just keep talking till four? I'm gonna talk to <laughs> I just, I, I, sh I don't know, I should ask this. I know that uh, my family, they, my brother-in-law came over from Oklahoma City 
But I don't know, is he still here? Fowler, are you still in the room, or have you taken your puppy and gone back to Oklahoma City? He said he would have to go back to Oklahoma City. But I, I was going to tell a story on him, and I will tell this story because I think it's kind of fun. My brother-in-law has been in my life since I was six. My sister was nine years older than I, and he started dating her when she was in high school, and they got married at the beginning of the Korean War. So he just was around. He's like really always been my brother. And as you know, my sister died in 1980, but we are still like family. And of my immediate family, he's really the only one left. And so he, uh, we go back and forth and you all trouble. But, but I remember, and he didn't know I knew this, and so I was going to have a lot of fun with him today. When I went to the seminary, my brother-in-law, who had known me well since I was six years old, <laughs> said to my father, I'll bet you five bucks he's home by Christmas. <laughs> And he said, you didn't raise a kid to get through seminary life. <laughs> so at the day of my ordination, eight years later, I was standing in the back of the church where I was ordained, and I saw my brother-in-law. I couldn't figure out what was going on. He walked over to my father, and he gave him five bucks. <laughs> When he came to communion today, he couldn't even talk. He was so so shaken by all of this. So I thought this at least celebrated the fact that he was wrong and my dad was right. <laughs> Actually, I think he was wrong. My father was surprised and my mother was right. <laughs> so anyway, it's been a great 47 years, and that part of it doesn't end. It's been a wonderful 17 years as you, to be your rector, and I look forward to becoming the new Halpine. As I've told you over and over again, it's a whole lot better than retirement. I always said, Bishop, and I hope you have found this, the challenge at Holy Family Cathedral was never going to be, can there be a new Halpine? There was someone in line, ready to go. You have to find the new gear. <laughs> for your wonderful statements and your kindness. <coughs> Certainly to work with all of you has been a joy. It is wonderful to be supported by the principals, the teachers in the school, the staff, the many, many people in this parish who simply keep things going under all sorts of wonderful and difficult circumstances. And I deeply, deeply appreciate all of that. And as I also said, a real key part of who we are as a parish is all of you who are hiding behind those pillars. <laughs> and I know where you're hiding, and I look forward to you staying there forever because that support and that presence is very important to who we are as a parish as well. We pretty much cover the gamut of the folks at Holy Family Cathedral, and that's one of the great joys of being your pastor, is to be a available for the tremendous variety that we are as a parish. And I just hope we continue to grow in that. So God bless all of you, and thank you very, very much. pictures on those, that acoustic wall that's uh, spread out between this side of the auditorium and that side. Kathy Nelson is running around here someplace. She took most of those photos. So thank you, Kathy, for that and letting us uh, redo those. Sherry Young is around here someplace. She took those photos and even more and made a special scrapbook for you that will be uh, on its way to you maybe later this afternoon. And it will have Photos that have been contributed prepared from parish organizations covering moments that you have been ministering to them. So it's going to be a retrospective of uh, 17 years at the cathedral. So it's also time to kind of unmask the sea. Oh, here comes Sherry. She's here. I've been busy. <laughs> and now I blew the surprise so you can pretend that you don't know what's inside the box. Oh my God. <laughs> this one's really heavy. Are these the kind of things that I can open the book with the bishop present? I think so. Oh, this is lovely. 
and while these two look at photos. <laughs> it's time to unmask the secret committee that has been meeting uh, whenever Monsignor Gear would go out of town, or whenever he'd had an appointment elsewhere. Yeah, that's 